Hi, and welcome back to the series where we build real web application with React Redux and Node.js. So we're gonna continue where we left off. So we finished with, as you can see here, we finished with the uh, initial loading stuff. So now let's get down to localization and we're gonna use React Intel. And I opened here the React Intel documentation, uh, the, the actual GitHub repository. So what are we gonna do? What do we want to achieve? The bare minimum stuff. So we want to translate messages, translate any kind of uh, labels on our website, and we want to change locale. So from English to Russian and back. So let's do just that. Okay, so let's start with the app component. So here we're gonna wrap the whole application into the Intel provider. So for that, of course, we need first to install with the yarn add react Intel. Okay, and after uh, we've done it, let's import, let's import Intel provider from react Intel. So now we can use this Intel provider and we can wrap everything into it. So we'll do Intel provider, Intel provider, and I'm gonna just cut this closing tag and Paste it here. So this Intel provider can take locale and let's set it to Roo. Okay. And another thing that he can take, it can take is the messages object. So let's add it right away. So messages and there's gonna be just an object. And this object will have the key is the ID of the formatted message that we have and the value is the actual translation. So for Russian, we'll have, for example, nav dashboard. So the dashboard string that we have in the navigation bar, and that's gonna be panel управления, okay? So, but that's not it. So we, we set up locale, but we need to, um, you know, we need to load locale, uh, this particular locale. So we do it with the add locale data function. So let's do it in index because we initialize everything in index and also we'll check in local storage for the um, saved uh, language. So let's add here. Let's first let's import it. So we're going to import add locale data from react Intel. And we need to input the locales themselves. So we input in from React Intel locale data slash in. And the same thing we do with Russian language. And after that, we'll just do add locale data in and row. Okay, so let's go to the browser. Let's have a look. Uh, it's, it still works, no errors, that's nice this rare occurrence that we have no errors. So next we can use the formatted message component that is um, provided by uh, this library. So we can go to the top navigation, for example, and let's import formatted message component from React Intel. And now instead of this dashboard, we're gonna use formatted message and it takes two arguments that are required for this work properly. The first one is the ID. That's the one that we specified in our messages. That's by, by this string, it will be searched this object of translations. So let's uh, nav dashboard for us. And the second one is default message. Default message, and that equals to dashboard. So if we go back here, you can see now that we have Russian Panel управления, panel управления instead of dashboard. That's good, that's good. But of course we need a way to switch between languages. So right now, if um, if we go back here, you can see that mm, in app, you can see that we hard code this locale and messages right here in the component. That's not good. What we wanna do, we want to take it from the state, from the Redux store. And we also want to store it in local storage. So if user if user wants changed language, we want to store it and you know use this language. Okay, so let's start with the Redux uh, stuff. 
So first of all, we need to have it here. So where do we expect it in the state? We can have the separate object locale uh, in the state, but here all we need to have is language, for example, state, locale, lang. Okay. So now we expect in here to have lang, and that's going to be a string. I need to add comma here. And I'm going to get it from here as well. So there's going to be lang, and I'm going to use this lang instead of hard coded rule. Good. So now we need to define this. So let's go first of all, let's go to a root, a reducer. And here we're going to define locale. Let's duplicate this stuff. Locale. Good. And now let's create in reducers. Let's create locale reducer. JS reducer. And uh, here by default, that's going to be lang equal to English. Let's go back. Reload the page. We still have in Russian. Let's go to Redux. Uh, do we have? Yeah, we have locale lang in. So that doesn't work. So let's go back to app. So we ha we have in here the lang. Oh yeah, that doesn't work because we always specify that nav dashboard equals to this stuff. So we need to, to change our messages as well. So instead of this, we're gonna have messages. And let's input it messages, uh, messages, lang. Okay, and we're gonna, oops. and we're going to import messages from, let's say messages right from here. Okay, so now we need to create one. So in current in current file folder, we're gonna create messages.js and we're gonna export default uh, object. Inside of it, we'll have English and Russian. And here we'll have nav.dashboard, and that's gonna be dashboard. And inside of Russian, we'll have the nav.dashboard equals to panel управления. Okay, so now if we go back, now we have dashboard. That's cool. That's because in the state, uh, in our Redux state, we have the English by default. So now we need a way to change it. So that's easy, right? But the, the most uh, difficult thing here is actually to find a, a place uh, where to add these links. So right now I'm just going to do it right here in the in the top navigation bar and I will think about it later how maybe to style it and maybe use some flags, something like that. So for now, let's go to the top navigation. And here before this uncontrolled drop down, let's add a couple of just links. Um, a, roll button, and we'll have the link English. And the same thing goes for Russian. Okay, and we'll add this separator here. I have no idea what I'm doing. It, it will not work. Yeah, it will not work. It, it's just ugly. Yeah, I need to have this uh, formatted, but it's good. It's good. We'll style it later. Right now, I just want to switch language and see the magic of, you know, like the whole application just translates itself. Of course, for that to work, we need to actually go through all the messages in our application and from now on as well, use formatted message instead of just simple spans or divs. So here, what I wanna do, I want to uh, dispatch another action, setting the language. So there's gonna be a thunk action because we, we want also to store this in the local storage as well. So I'm gonna just, Input um, set locale and um, gonna import set locale from actions uh, locale. Now I'm expecting it here as well. So we'll have set locale uh, prop types function. And now when user clicks on these buttons, so on click, we'll have the this props 
No, not this props, it's a functional component, right? No, this is a class component, okay. This dot props dot set locale. And we just pass down the the value. So for English we have in, for Russian we have ru. So now we need to define the set locale. For that we need to go to the uh, we need to create, we need to go to actions. So let's create locale.js file. And here we'll define uh, thunk action. That's gonna be set locale. Set locale. It takes a uh, language. We'll need to have a dispatch. And here actually We'll, we will not make any kind of asynchronous requests, but we'll use the local storage. So we'll have local storage and we'll set uh, locale for uh, this application. We'll set an lhub language equals lang. So we just store it in the uh, local storage this way. And after that, we want to dispatch um, locale, cal set, and we pass down language here. So now we need to define x port constant uh, locale set so it has language and it have the type locale set and language now we need to import locale set from types and now we need to go to types and uh, types and let's add here the Locale set. Okay. So now we need to go to reduce or locale, reduce a locale. Oh man. And here we need to import uh, locale set from types. And uh, here, case, locale set. So very standard stuff. We're going to return the lang equals to action length. Okay, so basically switching between the locales and storing the language in the local storage. So let's go back to um, to the browser, let's switch to Russian, and here we go. English, Russian, Russian, English, Russian. It works, nice. But now I'm in Russian language, but if I reload the page, it will go back to English because we store it in the local storage, but we never use this data from it. So we need to go back here. Let's go to index.js file. And inside of here, we'll check. So if we have local storage, uh, lhub lang set to something, then we want to store locale set and we set it to the value that is there. So we set it to local storage dot lhub lang. So we need, oh man, dispatch, <laughs> dispatch uh, local set like this. And now we need to input it. So we input local set from actions local and now as you can see when I reload it we have Russian language because it is stored in the local storage now if I go back to English it's English and if I reload the page it's still English how cool is that so now our purpose is not to forget to use formatted message component everywhere that we use translatable messages and later we'll, we can just uh, use one of the scripts to get all of this data from the formatted uh, messages components and have the whole thing that we need to translate and just translate it. And we'll have the bilingual or trilingual application as easy as that. So, and it's, it's pretty cool. So it's fast, no page reloading, nice. Okay, so let's go back to our card here. So we set it up, guest changes language okay we set it to to the user so that's good but we do not have the guest changes language yeah that's that's a bummer because when we actually log out we don't have uh, any kind of stuff here but that's okay i'm just gonna delete it and just like that 
we are done. <laughs> because for, for the guest users, for public pages, we will do other stuff and we'll just reuse the same um, links that we have for the users. Okay. So that works. This feature is completed. So let's commit changes. Simple i18n, done. Okay, so let's take a break right here because we finished one simple uh, feature. And if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel if you're still not, and share it with your friends and family. If you want to support me, you can become my patron or just give me one-time donation via PayPal. And the best way is just to buy my course on gsfullstacker.com. Thank you very much for your time and see you in a moment.